Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 10 of the serialization series. So last time we talked about arrays and we wrote out 50,000 uh, random integers out into the console in our serialization format. Uh, and we implemented the array class and all that stuff went well. However, one thing that I mentioned at the end of the episode was that it would be nice if we could print this out into a file rather than into the console, because it's a bit hard to read in the console. Um, and we have to like format it and it takes a while, especially if it's a large, if it's a large amount of data, um, because console, uh, printing of course is very slow. So let's quickly implement a little method that will help us actually write bytes to a file. So I'll say maybe save to file or something. Um, we'll have the path of the file and we will have a byte array with the actual data. Uh, I'm going to write a buffered output stream. So stream equals new buffered output stream, new file output stream. And, uh, just with the path control shift O to import all that stuff and surround with try catch here. And then I'll just do stream dot write data and stream.close and we should be done, right? That should pretty much be it. I'll just replace this with an IO exception to get rid of that error and we should be fine. Okay, cool. So that was easy. Um, so instead of doing this now, what we'll do is we will uh, grab our stream instead of print bytes, right? We'll just do save to file. The path right now, we, we will just probably save to, um, let's see. So what should our rain cloud civilization file be? Um, rain cloud data, maybe RCD. I don't know. Rain cloud database. That'll be kind of like our database. Um, and then we'll, I guess we'll call it like test. Uh, and then the data of course will be the stream. All right. So if I run this, uh, it should just write everything out to file. If we refresh the binary thing, we should see that test RCD file in our working directory. And we should see a bunch of binary data, which is being interpreted as text here. So if we actually do open up the, um, whoops, if we actually do open up the location of this workspace, which is right here, binary, uh, we'll see that test.rcd file, we can open it with something like sublime text. Um, and that will kind of show everything here. Here it is, it's open now. Um, and you can see all that stuff, but we can actually do one better. And we can use a utility called hxd, which is my favorite um, uh, kind of hex viewer, right? Uh, and or binary viewer, whatever you want to call it. It's really like a, a hex editor is what they're called. Uh, and basically this will just let us kind of look at this stuff um, and immediately translate it into strings and just sort it a bit better than just looking at it through Sublime. There are some plugins for Sublime that will actually uh, enable you to edit it properly and to translate it into characters as well. But I still prefer using um, uh, HXD. And now another thing that Sublime tends to do, I'm not sure if all versions of Sublime text do this, but a lot of them uh, actually load in the entire file into memory first and then start kind of viewing it, which just means that um, uh, it, if you've got like a hundred megabyte file, it'll actually take like a minute to load. Um, whereas uh, HXD, uh, HXD just memory, uh, it just memory maps the file and it can, you can scrub through it uh, smoothly and it only kind of loads in uh, the data that's actually being displayed, which is cool. Kind of like Notepad++ as well. All right. So anyway, if we drag, if we just drag this in, you can see that we'll see uh, all of our stuff here. We can see, we can easily see where the bytes are. You can see that that's the name of our database here or the name of our um, array in this case, it's just called test. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of data, which are random integers, right? Uh, cool. So there we go. Um, just something that we can use from now on to look at our outputs. Cool. So uh, today we're going to, the big thing that we're going to talk about today is um, the next container type, which is an object. Okay. Uh, and after that, in case you guys are curious as to what's going to be next, uh, we're going to talk about actually implementing something called a database. And if you go back to the first kind of few episodes where I drew diagrams and we talked about that stuff, um, a database is just something that contains multiple objects, right? Um, so the idea is that objects are just things that contain fields and arrays. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, so think of an object as literally a class in Java, for example, that's kind of what this is. Uh, we have a class and we have um, members inside that class and they could be fields like an integer here or a string there, all that stuff. Uh, strings is actually something that we need to do as well, but it could be like a, a normal field or it could be an array of data, right? Like a bunch of integers there or something like that. Um, and objects contain multiple fields and arrays. So let's go ahead and just create a class called object. Now I'm afraid this is probably going to, this is probably going to conflict 
with uh, Java's object class. So I'm actually gonna call it RC object just to avoid any kind of confusion. RC of course stands for rain cloud. I'll probably prefix all these at the end as well. Like um, field and array will be like RC field and RC array. In fact, we could probably do that right now. If you just head over to the file, uh, right click here, hit refactor and rename or Alt Shift R. Um, and then type in RC at the front, hit enter. It should rename everything, including the file name. Uh, and we'll do the same thing for field as well. So RC field. Okay, and now we shouldn't have any kind of conflicts with anything. And you can see in main now they're kind of switched over. Okay, cool. This will just, this is almost like putting it inside a namespace. I mean, we already kind of have namespaces with packages, but uh, stuff like object, which is available in every namespace, because it's actually, you know, in the Java, uh, it's in the java.lang package, which automatically gets included everywhere. Uh, we can't really do much to not use that, that namespace. Okay, cool. So, um, RC objects, what are they going to contain? Well, it's going to be very similar to what RC arrays have, right? In RC arrays, we have the container type. We have, I'm just going to copy basically all of this. Um, we're going to go back to RC object and paste that in. Container type will be set to object, of course. Uh, it's going to have a name. It's going to, it's not going to have a type or a count or data. Well, yeah, it's not going to have any of that stuff, right? It's going to have a name length and a name. Let's talk about what RC object actually does have though. The main thing that it has, of course, is a list of both uh, fields and arrays. So I like to put fields first, so we can have something like uh, an array list of uh, fields. All right, and we'll just import that, till list. Uh, and then I'll duplicate that and have the same thing for arrays. Uh, it's up to you as to how you specify it. I mean, a lot of people like like having them sorted. So in other words, maybe you, 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 like when you add things to an object, you have them in a certain order that you want to maintain. I'm not one of those people. I don't really care about ordering too much because each of these will have a unique name anyway, or at least it should have a unique name. Uh, and we can definitely like verify that as well. Um, but that's the idea, right? So we have a bunch of fields and we have a bunch of arrays. How many fields and arrays we have are dictated by um, the actual uh, um, are dictated by the actual uh, size of those lists, right? So we know how many we have. So if we look at what the byte structure kind of looks like, we're going to have a byte for the container type. We're going to have a short for the name length, so we're up to three bytes. We're going to have our name, and then we're going to have, of course, and like a field, like amount of fields, right? So we'll have our like a number of or a count for the amount of fields that we have, followed by all of the fields. And now, some, like, if we were really talking about kind of high performance and optimization and stuff, it's usually a good idea to have a table at the beginning of your database, which says where everything is. So that way we never have to loop through or kind of read the entire file if we just want to extract one field. Because think about it this way, right? If we have a giant uh, database here, right? And we literally like hundred, like a hundred megabytes, for example, think about how difficult it is going to be for us to fully deserialize that data, right? Uh, if we were looking for a specific field, like a specific object with a specific name, and in there we wanted a specific field, and that's all we wanted, right? It would be an absolute nightmare, okay? Because it would mean that first of all, after loading that file into memory, we would have to basically deserialize the whole file into this kind of structure and then somehow iterate through all the objects until we find the one we're looking for and then go into all the fields and look at what field we're searching for. And that's how we get that field. Not good, right? Instead, what you want to do is create a hash table or something like that. Um, at the beginning of the actual serial, uh, at the beginning of the actual um, serialization database, which has like, for example, object and then byte offset. And that way you can actually just straight away jump to what you're looking for um, to, uh, to see, uh, to see, you know, where that data is located and you can immediately find what you're looking for. So that's something that we might do in the future. Um, I don't really see that being a problem for us ever. I, I might just do it just for fun, right? And just to teach you guys about how that will actually work. Um, and like for education purposes, because it is a good idea to do that. But remember, this is primarily designed for networking. So we'll never be sending databases large enough for that to become a problem. But if you are serializing something like a save game out, and even if it is several megabytes and you just want to view something, it is a really nice optimization strategy to just do something like a little uh, list, a little table at the beginning of your um, 
of your serialization format, which says where everything is. It's like an index, all right? Like a table of contents. It's the same uh, situation as that. If you're reading a large book and it's like a thousand pages and you're looking for one specific chapter, how are you gonna find it, right? You're gonna have to look through everything. But if you've got a table of contents at the beginning or like an index at the end, you can immediately find which page number you need to go to and then just go there immediately. Okay, so there's the same principle here. So we could do something like that. We're not going to right now because I wanna get, again, I wanna get the groundwork done for all of this and have it working, and then we'll talk about optimization. Okay, cool. So, um, especially because this series really was never about producing something overly complicated. I wanna kinda get the simple stuff done first, and then if we have time, we'll talk about optimization and more advanced kind of things that we can do to uh to make this better okay so when we create an object really all i care about is passing in a name um i mean the type of data that it has varies of course because fields and arrays are completely different um in the sense that uh fields have their own names and like we can have fields of different types, right? We could have a couple byte fields, we could have a couple long fields, a couple integers, a couple of floats, it doesn't matter, right? We could have all this variety of data here. Um, so RC object is going to set the name in the same way that we set it for field and stuff. So again, for now, I will copy and paste that code. Um, and then what we'll do is just call set name um, with name. Right, uh, and you can see that's kind of what we uh, what we did with um, our constructors for all of this stuff, right? Uh, obviously, in this case, we had to create one for each kind of type of data, so we couldn't we didn't really use uh, new. In fact, this should have a private constructor like RC field does, um, which just means that we can't in, we can't uh, instantiate this class anywhere except for inside this class, which is perfect because that's the only place where we actually call new, right? Um, but the API for an object is going to look pretty similar. So we have this massive RC array, right? Let's use that as one of the things that we uh, actually put into our object. So when we make an RC object, and I'll kind of start laying this down now because um, uh, because we like there's like I, I usually like laying down the usage of a of a class that I'm writing so that I know how I want to design the API. Uh, so we'll make this object and we'll call this. Um, let's just call this entity, right? And then I'll call this like random numbers or something. It can have spaces, by the way. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to have spaces. Um, but, uh, you know, we don't need them. Uh, okay, cool. So I usually want to do something like object add array or something or push array, or you can call it whatever you like. Um, so I'll add in that array. Uh, let's also create a field. So I'll do maybe something RC field field equals RC field dot. Okay, let's see what we want. Let's create an integer that will be kind of easy to read for us. We'll call this uh, integer and we'll type in eight. Okay, that'll be pretty straightforward. Um, and then we'll add field as well. So I wanted to be able to do object dot add field. And then finally, I want to be able to um, write out the object, right? So object get size, uh, object get bytes, and then that's all we have to do really. Cool, so let's start implementing these things. We'll start with field, um, cause that's kind of the chronological thing, I guess, fields, then arrays. Um, so add field is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna literally do fields.add field. It's actually all we have to do. Uh, we'll talk about uh, some more uh, complex things that we can do. Well, not really complex, but sorry, arrays or add array. But uh, some some more things that we can add here just to make our lives easier. For example, um, we're going to need to get size, obviously. So we've got two ways of maintaining this. Yeah, we could say for in i equals zero, or in fact, we can just use a for each loop where we say for each field uh, in our fields. Uh, we'll say int size equals zero, and then size plus equals field dot um, uh, get size, right? Size actually shouldn't be zero. Size should be one plus two plus name dot, oops, name dot length for now, right? But anyway, we'll say size plus equals field. And then of course we could do the same thing for our arrays. And that's actually not too bad, right? Um, it, it's not the best thing to do, but we could definitely do it. 
uh, and there we go. So we have to loop through everything and we have to collect the size and that's fine. And then we can return that at the end. That's one option and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Another way that we could implement this though is actually to keep track of something called size, right? And we'll start this off with zero. Or we'll start this off with one plus two plus, uh, we can't, we don't actually know the name length yet. Um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we can start this off with one plus two, right? And then of course add when we set the name and when we actually do this, we can uh, add to the size, uh, the name length, right? Um, this is a little bit annoying because it means that once we actually set that, we can't easily change it. But if we do something like this, it means that every time we add a field, we can simply add on that size, right? Uh, and then suddenly now it means that we never have to loop through anything. We can just return size. Okay. That's one way of doing it. Again, the only reason I wouldn't recommend you doing this is because the size, of course, if we do start removing fields, we have to handle that again, not that that's easy, not, not that that's hard to do. We can just do minus equals. However, if we do do set name, that's when we have to kind of make sure that we actually, um, control this. Okay. So the way that I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to do it this way because this way is better. Uh, so what I'll do is the only fragile part is this thing here. Okay. So basically what I should do is, um, I have to keep track of names. Like the, the easy way to do this is just to have our one plus two here, because that's always going to be the same, uh, not to worry about name dot length at all. And then every time we get the size, we can just add on name dot length. All right. And that way it's always going to be up to date. If we set the name again, we don't have to worry about it at all. Um, the other thing that we could do if we really wanted to, and this is totally fine, but you could also do something like, uh, um, size minus equals this dot name dot length. If so, if, if, um, this dot name doesn't equal null, which it, which it should be null. It, it will be null at the beginning. Um, then we do that. And then at the end, we plus it with the new name or like written like this, for example. Um, oh, sorry, this won't be this sort of name, will it? This will be, oh, yes, it will. Yeah. Something like that, right? Um, or plus equals name length. That's also acceptable. Totally fine. You can do it that way as well. Um, in fact, that's probably going to be better than having to add that all the time because it's because we can actually use the field here. We don't have to use get size. So there's a few different ways to do it. As you can see that that's just a bit of insight as to what you can choose. Um, so name of course will be null at this point before we actually do name dot get bytes. Um, okay, cool. So let's kind of leave it at that and that should work perfectly. So we've added fields, we've added arrays. Now the big thing, and we know the size of everything, which, because we keep calculating that. So the last thing we need to implement now is get bytes. So we have, uh, that, and what is that other parameter? Zero. Oh, of course that's the pointer. So where are we? RC object pointer. So again, this is going to be pretty much the same as it is in all the other ones. In this case, we did that. So let's copy and paste that. It's going to be a bit different. But basically we have our destination here um, and we have, this is an int uh, and I'm going to do the, it's going to be the exact same thing as far as this goes. And then of course, instead of type and data, it's just going to be us printing out fields and stuff. So the way that we, the way that we can do that is just by having a for loop called RC field. So we'll go through each field in fields um, and we'll set pointer equal to write bytes. And then of course uh, the destination pointer and then instead of type, we'll write field dot get bytes. Okay. Um, and again, uh, actually we don't even have to do that. Do we, we don't have to write bytes because it will write it for us. So if we do field dot get bytes destination and pointer, uh, sorry. And we have to make sure that we increment that pointer that should write all that stuff for us because get bytes will actually write them into our, into the parameter that we, so this really shouldn't be get bytes. Should it, it should probably be like set bytes or write bytes because get bytes kind of assumes that it's going to return a new thing for us. Um, so that's something that we could definitely change as far as naming goes. All right, cool. And then we'll have the same thing for array. Um, and that's actually it. Okay. That's all we have to do. Um, actually no, it's not because I forgot to write out the sizes. That's very important. <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to write out the amount of fields that we have. Now, remember every field is not going to be the same size. 
That's very important to realize. Same with arrays, right? We have no idea what the size of the array is until we actually look at the array and see what size it is. So um, again, that's not a problem or anything. It's just something to keep in mind. So we'll have to do uh, pointer write bytes, destination pointer and field dot size. All right, now this will be a an int, uh, which I'm kind of okay with. I don't really mind too much. Um, and then uh, we'll do the same thing here as well. Now, instead of doing this this way, which is totally fine, I'm actually I actually am going to add it here. I'm going to say, um, and we can we'll keep this private, private um, private int. Um, yeah, we'll change this to a short private short uh, field count. And then after that, we'll have a private short array count. Again, whether or not you want to sort that like that or like that is up to you. Um, the, the reason is I like having a, an actual structure to my like object so that when I'm deserializing it and when we have to look at the structure, we actually see what it should be. We don't have to keep referring to get bytes, which of course is a bit more complicated. So this should now be printing out field count and this should now be printing out array count. So of course, all we have to do is every time we add a field, we simply set field count equal to uh, fields dot count, or rather fields dot size. Um, of course, instead of that, and we'll cast that to a short. Of course, instead of that, we could be doing something as simple as incrementing it every time we add a field. Um, but I, this is just a, bit, a little bit better because it means that if we ever have something like adding an array of fields straight away, we don't have to like increment it by that amount or anything like that. So I don't know. It's again, multiple, as I've demonstrated this episode, hopefully there are a million ways to do this. Um, but this is just the way that I've chosen. So we have field count and array count, and that should be of course, up to date and accurate. Cool. Uh, so there we go. Um, and if we don't add any fields, these, these will just be set to zero. Okay, cool. So there we have it. That should be everything. Um, let's go ahead and write this out and see what happens. So I'll hit the debug button. Oh, we crashed. Um, probably because of object get size, right? So we tried to get the bytes and that did not work. How many arrays do we have? We have one. So let's see what the problem was. How many, first of all, how many of these do we have? What is the length of stream? Uh, let's switch over to debug. We did do object or get size. Yes, we did. Adding arrays and stuff did increment the size by that. Hmm. Oh, of course. No, I know what the problem is. Um, we forgot about these ones. So uh, for the size, then I guess we'll definitely put uh, so name dot length is something that we set here, and then we also need to make sure that we have plus two plus two for uh, each of these. All right. So. Let's run that. And this time it looked like it worked. So there's our test file, 196 kilobytes. This is probably gonna be a little bit difficult to read. I think it reloaded everything again. Uh, let's go back up to the top. All right, and let's go through this. So all we did was we wrote out a single object. Yeah, that's, that's, the, only thing, that's the only thing that this stream contains. Um, so if we go into object, we, the first thing we should see is the container type of object. So you can see that we have a byte here that says three which matches object. Uh, the next thing we have is a short, which let me just close all this stuff that we don't need anymore. Um, we have we should have a short, which is the name length. So the name length is six characters. Then we have the characters which make up that name, which is entity, the thing that we called our RC object. All right, straight off to that, we should have our field counts. So how many fields we should have? Again, a short, and we see that we have one field, okay? Um, and then inside field, of course, we know that, um, that we have an RC field, which is, which means it's one, right? Cause field is equal to one. Um, and then we have name length. We know that fields work correctly already. So we have the name length, which is seven. Then we have the word integer, which are these bytes here, right? Minus this one. Um, then we have a byte for the type four, which is integer, right? If we go into type four is integer right over here. Um, and then what do we have? I guess we've got the data, right? So where was four? Four was integer. And then here's the actual integer, eight, right? Um, I wonder if I can zoom in here. I mean, I could, I'm sure you guys can see this though. 
So I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, all right, so uh, we set that to eight, of course, here it is. Um, and then what do we have? Uh, I think that's it, right? Um, that's it for field, yeah, that's it for field. So after that, we have the array count, which again is a short, which is set to one. Um, and then we have the beginning of the array. So our array, of course, means that our container type is set to array, which is number two. That's the two you see here. Um, and then we have, uh, let's see. And then we have the name length and the name. So the name length over here is D, which is 13. Um, and then we have the name, which is random numbers. You can see it over here in our viewer. I might just make this like 32 or something, uh, just so that we can kind of see more here. Um, that actually kind of, I think that made it harder to read. Oh, well. Uh, then we've got the type, uh, which is an integer, which should be four, right? Uh, there it is. Um, the count, so how many things we have in an array, which is an integer. So here it is, C350, that's quite a high number. Well, we know that it's 50,000. Um, and then, of course, we have the actual data, which is what the rest of this file is um, up until the very end. Okay, so there we go. That's how we implement objects. Again, the only problem that we're going to have is because when we have all these container types, if, if, if we have a lot of them and we want to find specific things, then we kind of have to iterate through this tree to figure out, um, you know, how far we need to go, right? So, for example, if I might get past the first object, uh, how, how do I know how many bytes that is? Yeah. Um, one of the flaws here that kind of comes up is we don't know how big the object is, right? We have a size, but we don't actually print that out. You'll notice we only have, um, in order to find out how big the object is, we actually need to, we don't write that out anywhere. And that's kind of a flaw, I think as well, um, that we could definitely work on. You could just write out, you know, the integer size, um, and you would be totally fine. Uh, and really, we're probably going to start talking about that and other optimization things a bit later on. But that is the basics of how we can have all of those container types implemented. Okay, the last container type is actually a database, which is basically the entire file and a database, which we'll add right now. Database is equal to four. And that's what we're going to work on next time. And that's going to have um, that, that is the thing that contains objects, arrays, uh, well, that contains objects, right? Um, and that is what the actual file, that, that's the, that's kind of the highest level that we can go as far as, um, the files go. If this is like, if field is like field and array are kind of the lowest levels, object is kind of in the middle and database is the highest level, uh, thing we have, which is the actual file. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have much else to say. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.